Uh, I'm Mr. Cast at Little Middle School, and you're watching West Virginia History in two minutes or less. Today is part two of my Cold War series about what's known as the Mate One Massacre of 1920. Here we go. On January 30th, 1920, President John Lewis and local President Frank Kinney, president of the UMWA District 17, led a movement to unionize the rest of southern West Virginia, including Mingo County. A strike of 400,000 UMWA workers secured higher wages and safer working conditions, but that was not the case in southern West Virginia. Just as in Paint Creek before, miners were forced to sign yellow dog contracts saying they would not join a union. Miners were paid in coal scrip, which was only good at the company areas. On May 6th, Bill Blizzard and Frank Mooney spoke to about 3,000 miners and half of them would join the UMWA. On May 19th, 12 Baldwin Feltz agents began evicting unionized miners in Mate 1 for the Stone Mountain Coal Company. The sheriff of Mate 1, Sid Hatfield, wasn't happy about the poor treatment at all and urged miners to arm themselves. After carrying out some evictions, the Baldwin Feltz detectives went on to wait for a 5 o'clock train to Bluefield. There, Sid Hatfield said he had an arrest warrant from the Mingo County Sheriff. Albert and Lee produced their own arrest warrant for Hatfield. As this was happening, miners had surrounded the area. Tension mounted, and as they were on the porch of Chambers Harbor stores, Hatfield, Feltz, other guards, and Mayor Testerman, shots rang out. The mayor was shot. Hatfield shot Feltz. When the dust settled, the Mate 1 massacre left seven detectives, two miners, and the mayor of Mate 1 dead. Governor Cornwell sent the state police in to take control of Mate 1. Weapons were stacked in the hardware store, and by July, another strike erupted. Railroad cars were blown up, strikers were beaten, and it culminated on August 1st, 1921. To miners, Sid Hatfield was a hero, and he's acquitted of all charges, but he and his deputy, Ed Chambers, were walking up the steps of the McDowell County Courthouse in Welch when Baldwin Feltz detectives assassinated them. Hatfield and Chambers' murderers were acquitted of all charges, and tensions reached the boiling point when on August 7th, Thousands of miners protested the killings at the Capitol grounds. Against the wishes of Mother Jones, Keeney and Blizzard urged them to fight. Support grew leading to the Battle of Blair Mountain. 